with pain, your spirit soars and sings. Though sorrow clouds your day, its sunny skies tomorrow brings. <laughs> It was exactly as Anne had wanted this special day to be. The snow had arrived overnight. Green Gables was covered in a white blanket that glittered and sparkled in the sun. Same to you, my little Anne. Uh, I have something here, something for... Uh... Aren't we lucky, Marilla? We've got a white Christmas after all. It's been so warm until now that I thought we'd have a green Christmas this year. And I don't like a green Christmas because everything is so grey and brown and drab. You know, it should actually be called a brown Christmas. Green Christmas is totally wrong. I don't know why people insist on calling it green. Are they blind? It's the wrong oh. word. Don't you agree, Matthew? I uh, have something I want to give... Uh... Huh? Matthew? Well, it's just a little... just a little gift for you. Um, huh? oh. oh, Matthew! Is that for me? Oh. Yes, Anne. This is for you, especially for you. I, I hope you like it. So you don't like the dress, do you? Oh, well, I, I don't understand much about these things. You think I don't like it? Oh, Matthew! <laughs> I think it's absolutely beautiful, Matthew. I can't believe it. I've always dreamt about a dress like this. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I love the sleeves. I've always wanted puff sleeves, Matthew. Be careful, Anne. Rather use a handkerchief, or do you want to spoil your lovely new dress, hmm? Matthew went to a lot of trouble to get it for you, Anne. Keep it a secret. Oh, I forgot. I have another small gift for you, Anne. Rachel Lindy asked me to give you this. Here. Oh, Rachel Lindy. Oh, how kind. 
<gasps> it's a brown hair ribbon that goes with my dress. Do you mind if I try it on? I can hardly wait. But of course you must try it on. I'm just as curious to see you in that dress. Oh, you're radiantly lovely. It's as if I'm floating on a cloud high in the sky. I've never had a dress like this before. Never, ever. Wait, Anne. You can try the dress on after breakfast. The tea's getting cold, so come on. Matthew, would you please sit down now? <sighs> yes, but I'd like to see Anne in... Sorry, I couldn't possibly eat breakfast now. Please, Marilla, I have to try my dress on first. Don't worry, the dress won't fly away, Anne. It hasn't got wings. I can't wait to feel what it's like to wear a beautiful dress like this. I'm sure it's much better than having breakfast. Breakfast is so ordinary. I'm sorry, Marilla, but it's impossible for me to put it down now. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sure it's difficult for you, but I'm afraid I still have to insist that you eat your breakfast this morning. Today's the day of your school concert. Do you want to perform on an empty stomach? If you don't eat, the audience won't be able to hear your heart-rending groan properly because your tummy will be rumbling much too loudly. Oh, you're right. I'm so glad puff sleeves are still in fashion. I'd never get over it if they went out before I had a dress with them. But now I have my very own puff sleeves. I can't tell you what it feels like when a dream suddenly comes true. And it was very kind of Mrs. Lindy to give me that lovely ribbon, too. Poor Mrs. Lindy. She went to so much trouble, and I'm not even a pretty little girl. I've always dreamed of being beautiful one day when I grow up, but I'm not so sure it's possible, not with freckles and a face like mine. I suppose all I can hope for is to be a bit above average. But who knows? This dress might change my whole life. In a beautiful dress with puff sleeves, you become a totally different person. Everything is easier. More things come your way. Who knows? Maybe I'll even be better at geometry, too. In this dress, nothing will hold me back. Nothing will stop me. Diana's coming! She won't believe her eyes when she sees my beautiful new dress. Just as I thought. The child is totally overwrought again. <laughs> to you too, Anne. Hey, you won't believe what I got for Christmas. Matthew bought me a dress. It's the most beautiful dress I've ever seen, really. It's got puff sleeves, Diana. There's none in Avonlea with sleeves like that. And these are big. They're absolutely huge. It was all Matthew's idea. What do you think of that, Diana? It's really sweet of him. You have to close your eyes now. Why? All right, now look here. Oh, Aunt Josephine sent us a big parcel full of Christmas gifts for me and the whole family. And this one is specially for you, Anne. What? Did your Aunt Josephine really think of me, too? Yes, she did. Come on, I'll open it. <gasps> Diana, this is becoming too much for me. I don't know whether I'm dreaming or awake anymore. These are just what you needed, don't you think? You have your own lovely shoes now, so now you won't ever need to borrow Ruby Gillis's that are three sizes too big for you. Aren't you glad? You told her to buy me these slippers at Mission. <laughs> just think, Josie Pa will burn with jealousy when she sees you in your new fairy slippers. No, you're wrong. Josie won't burn, I'm burning. I'm all ablaze with happiness, Diana. Please do me a favor. Pinch me as hard as you can, please. <laughs> all right. Is it a dream or is it real? <laughs> I was scared. Oh, what's wrong now? I feel no pain at all. <gasps> that means that it's all just a dream. <laughs> you fell for it. You fell for it. I only pretended to pinch you. Diana, how could you? That was really mean of you.
So what do you think? Do I look all right? Does it suit me? I know nothing about dresses, but you look absolutely wonderful. Oh, thanks. That sounds good. Now that I have this dress, I'm going to try to be an angelically good girl. I promise you that. <laughs> thank you, Matthew. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Anne. A great pleasure. Oh, look at the time! I have to rush now, or else I'm going to be late. And I can't be late. Not today. I promised Anne I'd be there. We have to clean the hall so that everything is neat and tidy. And then we still want to have a last rehearsal before tonight. I'll tell you all about it when we come home. Anne, I know nothing about these things But like I could act it out for you, Matthew. I would like to see it, but with the exception of one thing. Oh, all right, then. What don't you want to see? Your groan. I beg you, spare me your heart-rending groan. I want tonight at the concert to be the last time I see and hear it. What? Are you going to the concert? Of course. Don't you think I want to see the child on the stage? Oh, Marilla, I really didn't know you were interested. You were against the school concert right from the start. I would never have dreamed of asking you to come tonight. But why should I be against the concert? It's for a very good cause. It's going to help you pay for a schoolhouse flag. Oh, Marilla! Careful, <laughs> please don't be so rough, you'll break them. I'm so sorry. Well, I have to go now. Uh, what time's the concert? Do you know, Marilla? I've forgotten. Of course I know. Six on the dot. Anne, uh, wait a moment. I want to tell you something. I, I want... I know what you want to say, Matthew, but I don't have to. Thanks, I'll be fine. When my knees start shaking, I'll just think of my puffed sleeve dress, and then I'll be fine again. Your dress will save my life tonight. Bye, Marilla. Bye-bye, Matthew. See you later. Anne, I, I want to tell you... Oh, listen, Marilla, uh, I'm also going tonight. What? Would you repeat what you've just said? I've decided to go to the school concert tonight. I want to be there. I can't believe it. Well, well, you just have to believe it, won't you, sister dear? I'd never have thought you'd go to the town hall of your own free will to see a concert. To tell the truth, I wouldn't have thought so myself five minutes ago. Important occasion like this, can't let the child down. Mm. Avonlea's pupils worked harder than ever before. The bleak town hall was gradually being transformed into a festive concert hall. While some pupils were hammering away and making garlands of flowers, others had their last rehearsals. The people of Avonlea were very enthusiastic about the concert, and everyone was there. No one stayed home. All the tickets had been sold. There wasn't a single empty chair. But many, many hours of rehearsals over the past few weeks seemed to have paid off. and didn't hesitate to show it. They applauded with great gusto. Only once did they laugh at the wrong moment, when a noble knight fell off the stage in the middle of a fight. <laughs> <laughs> when Diana made her grand entrance, Anne was much more nervous than she was. Diana looked quite calm. Anne was trembling on her behalf. So far, Diana's song had been the highlight of the evening. With her beautiful, clear voice, she sang her way into the hearts of the people of Avondale. Anne was very excited about Diana's success. Anne? 
You have to go on now. You're right. with such conviction that the audience was deeply moved and many an eye was wet. Marilla was proud of her, but she was grateful that she wouldn't hear Anne practicing her heart-rending groan again. <laughs> Jane Andrews and Josie Pye had been waiting all evening for their big chance. But when it came at last, Josie Pye, who was usually so forward, suddenly got stage fright. Your Majesty, the sight of your great and glorious beauty. <laughs> Oh, your majesty, your radiant face lightens the world just as the rays of sun brings light into the darkness. <laughs> you, fairy queen, are celebrating your birthday today and we're... You have new shoes. <laughs> we're having a banquet in the castle. A banquet, a feast, in honour of our beloved queen, the most beautiful fairy queen. Your Majesty, I need your help and, oh, your light, your light blinds me, Your Majesty. Don't you know today's a special day? It's our Queen's birthday. We need a schoolhouse flag, Your Majesty. <laughs> the Fairy Queen and her ladies-in-waiting got thunderous applause. Anne and her friends could never have dreamt that the piece they'd written themselves would be such a resounding success. Anne left the stage in a daze. She was hardly aware of the applause and didn't even realize that she'd dropped her flower. This is the happy morn where in the son of heaven's eternal king, of wedded maid and virgin mother born, our great redemption from above did bring. For so the holy sages once did sing that he our deadly forfeit should release and with his father work us a perpetual peace. Muse, shall not thy <gasps> sacred vein afford a present to the infant what? god? Hast thou no verse, no hymn, no solemn string to welcome him? See how from far upon the eastern road star-led wizards <laughs> haste with odours sweet. Run, prevent them with thy humble ode, lay it lowly at his blessed feet. The undisputed highlight of the evening was the tableau Faith, Hope and Charity, with Anne representing Hope. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're so glad you enjoyed the evening with us. Oh, tonight was as lovely as a dream. What a great success. We made at least ten dollars. That should be enough for us. Yes, the house flag won't cost more than that. You're right. And do you know what I heard? Mr. Allen wants to write a review of our concert for the Charlottetown newspaper. Oh, really? I think that's wonderful. What a reward. That means our names will soon be in the newspaper, Diana. Let's hope they don't forget the E in my name. You know, it upsets me when people call me Anne without an E. I'm sure he'll write beautiful things about you. I was so proud of you. You sounded just like a lark, an angel. Thank you. But you stole the show. Remember, you moved the audience to tears. Really? I can't believe it. I was so nervous. My voice sounded miles away to me. It sounded as if I had cotton wool in my ears. Did you like my groan at the end? It was the best ever. Even Mrs. Rachel Lindy was fumbling to find her handkerchief. I know it sounds like blowing my own trumpet, but we were the best. There's no doubt about Not it. Not so fast. You're forgetting about Gilbert. He was also very good. He's so calm and in control. Nothing makes him nervous. Please stop it, Diana. You know I don't want to hear his name. Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert had never before experienced an evening like that Christmas night. 
Anne went to bed, but they couldn't possibly sleep. They were much too excited. What an enjoyable evening. And Anne doesn't have to take a back seat to those other children. I thought she was very good. I thought so too. You know, our Anne is a very intelligent little girl. I was against this school concert right from the very beginning. But I have to admit now, when I saw Anne on the stage tonight, I was very, very proud of her. Besides, the dress you bought the child really made her look quite pretty and special. But of course, I couldn't possibly tell her that. She's vain enough as it is. Yes, she looked beautiful. And she recited her poem beautifully, too. I was also proud of her. And I told her so after the concert. I think she deserves to. Oh. Mm. I think the time has come for us to start thinking seriously about our little girl's future. Don't you agree, Marilla? Hmm. What do you mean, thinking about her future? A girl like Anne deserves more than Avonlea's little school. She's clever. She needs better opportunities, a better chance in life. It's much too early for that, Matthew. She can go to a better school when she turns 15, but she's hardly 13 yet. She's still too young. My goodness, how time flies. To think she was just 11 when she came to live with us. Yes, she's grown up a lot lately. It's interesting how clothes can change a person. It's quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. She's a really fast learner. She had so much to catch up with. In that orphanage, they didn't bother to teach her anything at all. I think we should send her to Queen's, a really good college. Queen's? That's a good idea. You're right. We'll send her there. Please do me a favor and don't mention a word to her. We'll only tell her about it when it's time to go. It can't do any harm to plan ahead for the future. In fact, I'd say it's a very good thing, Marilla. It's better to know where you're heading in life. It's the only way to prevent you from making the wrong decisions. Mm. It's strange how a child in the house shows you you're not getting any younger. We're talking about college already, and in a few years she'll be grown up. Mm. Unfortunately. Anne and Diana still talked about the concert for a long time. It was difficult to adapt to the humdrum everyday life at school. Concerts were much more fun than geometry. So they made a plan. But more about that next time. Thank you.